Davis steps under center. Gibson and McClendon behind it. Davis with motion by Richard. Will get the ball to McClendon. He leaps. Oh, he doesn't get in. He fumbled the football. Carolina holds. The game is over. And Carolina has won the game. Ben lead to throw. Over the middle. Intercepted. Wolfuck again. Wolfuck the other way. At the 30. The 40. Wolfuck to midfield. Miles Wolfuck with the pick. The heels on the doorstep of an enormous victory. Left side of the line. Hood standing to Williams' is right. Williams going to throw. One-on-one. Davis has it. Touchdown. Carolina wins. Carolina is the Coastal Division champion. Bernard fields it at the 26. Heading to the far side. Gio at the 35. Gio, he's at the 50. No, he's not. Yes, he is. Gio is going to take it for a touchdown. for the possible win. Snap, spot, kick away, high enough, long enough. It's good! It's good! Carolina has won the game on a 42-yard field goal by freshman Hunter Burr. Good gosh, dirty. This is the Heel Tough Blog podcast hey guys and welcome to another edition of the heel tough blog podcast it's your host anthony pagnata with you guys as always and today we continue our off-season interview series as we talk to one of the tar heels most recent kickers it is the man that you guys know as field goal jesus the man who beat florida state with a 54 yard game winning field goal His call was in the uh, intro for a while. It is no longer in there, but it could rotate back around in there pretty soon as we're probably due to switch up the intro again here in uh, a short period of time. And when we do, uh, that call will probably be in there once again. You know him as Nick Weiler. He joined us uh, earlier this week, and we talked to him about his career at Carolina. We talked to him, of course, about the game-winning field goal But the first thing that we wanted to talk to him about was how he landed at Carolina. And it's a story that uh, isn't quite as straightforward, maybe, as some of the other guys that we've talked to. Yeah, there's actually a funny story behind that. I I originally told Maryland I was going to walk on um, to their team. UNC at the time was my number one. I had taken a visit to the school, fell in love with Chapel Hill. Um, I remember I left Northern Virginia, and it was like a sleet and icy day here, and I got to Chapel Hill, and it was like 50 degrees and sunny. And um, I was like, I can get used to that. I fell in love with the campus. Um, I knew that I wanted a chance to play from the start. Um, Maryland was giving me the opportunity. And this, at this time, you know, I wasn't even sure if UNC was going to offer me a walk-on spot. Um, so I didn't really hear much from Fedora or the staff. Uh, so I had, to, I had to move on at the time. I told Maryland I was going to play for them. And the day before, we kind of took pictures with, you know, my high school teammates about where we were going to pursue playing football. Um, I went to like a local sporting goods store because I'm, I'm from Northern Virginia, 45 minutes from College Park. And I bought a Maryland hat to wear. And on the way home, I got a call from Larry um, basically asking me to, you know, walk onto the team. Um, he told me he'd give me an opportunity to play from the start. And I hung up the phone and I was like, crap, I got I to gotta handle a very unfortunate call to Maryland right now because I knew right then and there like I could not go to UNC. Um, fantastic school, fantastic sports. I, I love the people there. I love the city. Um, I was just I was blessed that he you know, he asked me to come down and even give me a chance to walk on. I I played safety receiver, kicker, punter in high school, and I I don't think I had like very strong. Um, you know, kicking punting stats coming out. I had a really strong leg, and that was it. I probably could have dedicated more time to kicking in high school, but 
Uh, I was having too much playing on the field, too much fun playing on the field, and uh, I didn't really give kicking too much of a focus until um, college. Well, hey, uh, it worked out pretty well for you. You know, you get that first opportunity starting in 2014, and, you know, you, you did a good job coming in, you know, sort of shared some time with Thomas Moore, eventually took over that starting kicking job. But 2015 was where you really broke out. And, you know, I think a lot of people, when they look back at the 2015 season, they think about the years that – guys like Marquise Williams, Elijah Hood had, but, you know, you were, I mean, you had just a tremendous season. You actually set the record for most points in a season breaking Don McCauley's previous record. So, you know, what What do you think, you know, set up so special for you and uh, to have the type of success that you did? And, you know, how great was it for you to be able to, you know, be a big part of why Carolina, you know, finished the season with 11 11- yeah, that was, um, you know, that was definitely a, a breakout year for me. I, uh, my, my, my redshirt year that I was actually, I started off traveling as the backup punter. I got in some trouble. Um, I was suspended from the team and I was basically training on my own that entire fall. Um, so that, that season was pretty much a wash. And the next year, Fedora basically told me that, like, he wanted me to be the kickoff guy. I had a strong enough player. It's got to be consistent. Um, so then next season, I handled all the kickoffs. Um, I was battling two sports hernias the entire time. So I kind of I, – I still at, at that point didn't have a true season where I felt 100%, um, which leads into the 2014 year where I was able to have, you know, the off-season sports hernia surgery. I came back. I felt strong. But the surgery – put me back to where I wasn't kicking a football until, you know, end of spring, um, into summer. And I had three months to get ready to, you know, compete for the field goal job and definitely do kickoffs. And I remember the opening two games, I think I was like 14 or 15 for 15 on touchbacks. And, um, I got a little bit of action, um, in the San Diego state game. Uh, that was my first field goal ever. Um, so then going into the season, like I, I don't think I was fully prepared to kick field goals full time. Um, the stats, like I remember, I didn't have a field goal over like 25 yards that I made. I, and it's not like I didn't have the ability to do so. I just uh, I had a couple bad, couple bad like kicks, and I, I probably got a little too mental about it. Um, so that off season. I was like, I'm never going to let that happen again. Um, and I had a full season focus just on field goal kicking. I had to kick off down. Um, I worked a crazy amount on my mental side of the game, um, just getting really confident and not mad, not caring about the win, not caring about a bad hold or a bad snap, um, and just how cold it was and just kicking footballs. And the opening game against South Carolina, um, I'm pretty sure if my – memory serves it correctly. I think the first first kick I had was the kickoff, then an extra point, and then a 47-yard field goal in, in Charlotte um, at the Panther Stadium. And I had been making everything all preseason. I remember going into that kick thinking, like, I had, you know, the misses kind of lingering from last season. I was like, this kick has to go in. And I remember when it was dead center. And then on, like, field goals were easy to make. Uh, I, I didn't even think twice about um, the 2014 season. So I remember I, I missed a few that year. I don't know, two or three. Um, but it was – that was huge for my confidence. I remember really built on that. Um, I did feel almost automatic when I went up there. It was, it was kind of effortless. Uh, but, yeah, that's, that's what led to it. It was, you know, you don't – hear or see much about the years that led before, but everything kind of uh, step-by-step um, caused all of that to happen. Well, you know, from your perspective, because I think it, it's probably a pretty interesting one, being that, you know, people don't really talk about the special teams perspective. Well, you know, that 2015 season, what, what was that like being a part of a team that just had so much success? What was the environment around that team like? And did you guys know that as you entered that game against Clemson, if you would have won that game, you would have potentially had a chance to make the college football playoffs? Yeah, that, 
that was, I mean, that was, th- those last two years were my favorite football seasons ever. Uh, 2015 specifically, uh, going on a, a win streak like that is, you know, you take it play by play, practice by practice, game by game. Um, but I- I'll tell you what, like, we should have won that South Carolina game. We should have been undefeated going into the ACC championship. Um, the the onside kick, uh, offside penalty obviously hurts. Who knows what would have happened if we got the ball back. Um, you know, you hear all the stuff going on about reworking the college football playoff now. And um, even then, like, if they if they do make it to 12 or 16 teams, whatever they're going to do, like, we would have made it um, back then. But I, I don't know. Going toe-to-toe with Clemson and having – that onside kick go the way that it did hurt, but um, gosh, that was that was a fun year. I, I just remember how close we all were, and there was uh, I don't know that team was just it, it was different. Um, you know the the senior class and the junior class; those were a bunch of guys that came into a program that we knew we were going to be limited with scholarships. You know, it was a new coaching staff at the time, and everyone still committed. We were truly a brotherhood um i don't know that those those two classes were probably the closest i've ever been to a group of guys well it's 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 time man you knew what we were building up to let's talk about that 54 yard game winning field goal (laughs) now when you when you first line that up what is the thought i mean i know that florida state wasn't the same florida state even though at that time they were that, that most people forget that jimbo fisher was still there and that team was ranked what were they 10th in the country i believe they were yeah yeah still very and they were uh, they were on a 22 home game win streak you didn't you didn't yeah. go into Tallahassee and beat them at the time yeah now of course everything has kind of changed since and we like to believe that nick wyler was the one that changed all that but um, you know, what, what was what was that like, man, just standing there with a chance to win a game of that significance and, uh, you know, have, seeing that snap come back to work? Yeah. I, uh, I, I think about that kick a lot. Um, I think about what led up to it. I know that um, – this. I mean, this probably gets forgotten too, but the week before, we had just beaten Pittsburgh in a thriller. Um and for what it's worth, I, I had to kick an extra point in the last play of the game to win the game. If I missed it, we would have tied and gone into overtime. But it's still like literally the week before I had a trial run at winning the game with a simple little chip shot extra point. Um, so I, I, I'm sure that helped my mindset. But the Florida State game itself, like, I remember going into it, and I felt like I could, I could go 60 yards, 65 yards either way um, without snapping a hole just off the, the holder. Um, so I knew I was going to – I don't know. It, the balls were flying that day. It was really good weather. Um, and I had a chance at like a 51-yarder earlier in the game. And I just – I pushed it a little outside of the right, uh, to the right upright, and I was so upset with myself. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I just didn't commit to the 50 plus yard field goal, even though how well I've been in the, in the game. And then, um, you know, the series before Florida state goes down and takes the lead. Uh, I think it was Thomas Jackson's touchdown where I had to kick the extra point and I, I had it blocked. Um, there Florida state C tackle was in our scouting report. He had blocked like four kicks leading up to that, that year. I think he's, I don't know. He's he he was good at what he does, and he got a hand on mine. And the second Florida State started driving, and I saw how much time was left, I was like, "Oh my God, is that extra point really going to come down to losing the game?" Um, and I remember telling Fedora, "I was like, if we get the ball back, like, just get me get me across that field, and I'll make a kick, whatever." And he came down. He came over to me when I was. I think Florida State was probably like crossing midfield, and he's like, "You're gonna have to kick kick again." Um, so from then on, I really didn't watch the game. I was just hoping that there'd be enough time left when we got the ball back. And credit to Fedora and his staff, we have done I don't know two to three times a week my entire time there. Situational two minute drills, thirty second drills. It was never the same thing. Um, 
you know, how many times I ran onto the field in practice and picked up the old goal with like two seconds left. Luckily, there was a timeout, so I was able to not get ice, but I actually kind of enjoyed that time to gather myself. I didn't get rushed out there, drink some water on the sideline. I remember um, different guys coming up to me, talking to me. I not necessarily blacked out during that moment, but the nerves are so high that you can't really think um, think about what's going on. Um, and I do remember it being on the left hash, which for a right-footed kicker, like on a long kick, you have a tendency to pull it because um, you're giving so much at, at the ball. And I remember thinking on the left hash, oh, this is perfect. Like I'm just going to aim at the right upright. And, you know, over time, over the 54 yards, it's going to slightly fade or go back to the middle. Um, and I just aimed right, you know, right on the inside of the right upright. It was a good snap, good hold, and let it rip. I just remember thinking, like, oh, I cannot let this get blocked because that's another thing with long kicks is the trajectory you have to take to get it there is a little lower. Um, but I was like, you, you were kicking, you know, 60 yards at, you know, pregame. Just put this one a little higher, ensure that it gives it a chance to get blocked. You have no, no chance of getting it in. Um, and I remember thinking that ball was in the air for, like, what felt like five minutes to it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I remember exactly where I was. I was uh, going out for a family dinner during that time. Um, I forget. I think it was my mom's birthday or something like that. In the back of the car, listening to Jones Angel call the game, was un. I mean, not happy that I was missing the end of that. Game. <laughs> and uh, just, I mean, just praying that it would go through. And I mean, when he said the snap and the hold, I, I'm with you. It felt like a long time. When did you kind of know in your head that it was it, it was going in, and why did you go with the tomahawk chop reaction of the reactions that you could have gone? <laughs> so, uh, on the first note, I actually I didn't know it went in until the ref the referees put their hands up, and not because like I thought it went right or left. When you're standing that far back, it's kind of hard to tell where the ball crosses whether over or, behind, or in front mm-hmm. and like i said i i got under that to the point where like i did not want it to get blocked I, I put it higher than i was probably comfortable with and when it was traveling in the air i was like oh i hope that's enough i hope that's enough and i wasn't sure I was, like i saw the ball cross what looked like the, you know crossbar but it's hard to tell from back then the second they threw their hands up i i lost it internally and i I don't really know like, why I gut reaction did that. I think there was a lot of things I led up to it. I mean, during practice the entire week, we listened to um, that on the loudspeakers the entire week, nonstop during practice. They do it nonstop during the game. Um, and wh- when you're on the sideline and you're kind of sitting there and all the fans are doing it right over your head and they're saying terrible, terrible things to you, like – it's almost like each chop, they're, they're doing it to you, not trying to hit you, but, like, that's what it felt like. So the second one in, and I started I, – I think the running celebrating was just, like, so much excitement I couldn't control myself. And to throw the chop, it was kind of me just, like, basically chopping them back. I love it, man. It's my favorite – Tar Heel football celebration of all time. Uh, it's, just, it's, it's tremendous because it was on the road. You did it in front of their fan base. And, yeah, I mean, to this day, Florida State is just not the same. It, it's truly amazing uh, how, how big of a moment that was. Um, and, and, yeah, man, you know, after that, you know, you finish out your career in that 2016 season, probably not the way that everybody wanted it to end because it looked like, you know, yeah. after that win, it, it looked like Carolina had some things going. But, of course, Matt Collins gets injured. Everything kind of, you know, uh, falls apart we, a little bit. And, you know. Yeah, we had, we had some bad injuries that year. That's just one of those things where um, if you look at championship teams, um, they might not be the most talented at the beginning of the season, but they're usually the healthiest. Um, and I think that season was just, if we had everyone else, I know we had Caleb Pearson go down, we had John Fronto go down. So you lose two offensive line and you lose Matt Collins. It's, it's tough. I mean, it, it is what it is. I'll tell you this about something that no one really knows about the celebration is I, uh, 
was actually I was making the loop around the field and I was getting ready to in that left corner of the end zone on our sideline was our, you know, entire parent UNC fan section. I was getting ready to run and jump into there and a cameraman when I'm when I'm running the uh, the end zone towards them, kind of like steps out from the camera crew to get a picture of me, and I'm talking. I ran right into him. Like he jumped in front, tried to get a picture, and we crushed him. And uh, then I got dogpiled in the end zone, and by the time I could get up, it was too late to do anything else. I think I got you know on field interview, and um, that was that. But I. I don't know what I would have done if I actually got to the stands. Like, I don't know if I would have ran up there or what. But, like, uh, my parents were at the game, and they didn't even watch the kick. So they told me they were too nervous, and uh, they waited until the parents were around and started celebrating. I mean, yeah, and, dude, like you said, I mean, you, that followed just one of the – another crazy moment, one of the craziest moments in Keenan Stadium history, the comeback against Pittsburgh, a game that, I mean, almost nobody thought that there was going to be a chance to come back in that game. And, yeah, I think it is kind of forgotten because, you know, everybody remembers Bud catching the touchdown to tie the game. You end up kicking the game-winning extra points. Um, and I think at that point, you know, everybody was just kind of – see, even, even if you would have missed it for some reason, I think everybody was just so relieved that – Carolina still had a chance to even win the game because there was a point where everybody was just kind of, I guess, marking it down as well. This is, you know, this is another game where they're going to fall short. Unfortunately, we'll just have to bounce back and rebound. But uh, yeah, that that was a crazy two game stretch. I don't think any of us would change that uh, at all. And uh, glad that you were a part of both of those great moments. You know, where, where are you? Uh, where are you at today, man? What's uh, what you been up to since uh, your football career came to an end? I. Uh... I live outside of D.C. in Arlington, Virginia. Um, I work for my dad's company, which you know, he started back in like 2005, 2006. It's a legal technology company. I'm working in, you know, sales operations there. The daily grind, um, you know, I'm working hard enough where I get to enjoy some golf on the weekends. And um, I know that this year I will be back in Keenan Stadium for as many games as I can. I, I have four weddings I have to attend to in September. So it's one of those years where I'm not going to go to be able to go all the games I want to, but every weekend that I'm free, I'm going to be down there um, enjoying Chapel Hill on Saturday. Well, I'm pretty sure that we can all guess one of the games that you're going to be at, and we're extremely excited that you're going to be at that game. Um, yeah, my, my birthday is October 6th, so the dates align uh, pretty well, or I'm just going to make that a little birthday celebration. So have they have they talked to you about any sort of uh, any sort of special appearance on the field during that or not no yet? no I I haven't heard anything about it yet but uh, I wouldn't yeah. mind I wouldn't mind giving one more shot yeah I may yeah I may uh, I may see if I can try to help pull some strings on that because that would be fan. Fantastic. I will be at every game this year, um, so I would definitely love to see that. Uh, and the last question I got to ask you, because there is a man on the team that had some luscious locks just like you, and he has since shaved them off. And Jeff Schottner, does Nick Weiler still have the luscious locks? I do not, unfortunately. Uh, I uh, man. The, it's you know you, you grow up you have to be professional at work going in the office I, I couldn't do it but I do mess up I mean I, it is what it is if I if I have any sons that play sports I'm gonna encourage them to do it out while they can while they're young. Well, hey man, you'll still always be remembered as field goal Jesus, man. <laughs> Understand? Who knows? Maybe Hunter Crayford still got the crazy hair going on. You never really know. <laughs> But, hey, man, thanks for stopping by with us, man. We really enjoyed it, reminiscing about some of these great times uh, at Carolina. And, uh, yeah, ho- just, just uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing, man. Uh, sounds like you uh, are enjoying what you're doing up there in uh, northern Virginia. So, uh, take care. And, yeah, hoping to see you uh, on the field in that game against Florida State later on this year, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. All right, man. It was a pleasure. Have a good one. So we want to thank Nick Weiler for stopping by with us. Uh, Really great conversation there with him. Glad to hear that he is doing well working for his dad's company up there in Northern Virginia. 
And uh, he, hopefully, we're going to try to do everything we can. And Tario fans that are listening to this, make sure you guys, if you have any connections, let's try to pull some strings. Let's get him on the field in that game against Florida State later on this year because I really think that uh, he's one of those guys that could get people fired up. Florida State fans, of course, probably don't have the greatest opinion of him. So uh, let's let's get him out there. Let's get him on the field. Let's get an on-field presentation for him. It's actually, this upcoming season will be five years, believe it or not, since that miraculous game-winning field goal. Can't believe it's already been five years since that happened. But uh, we're going to do everything that we possibly can here on the Heel Tough Blog Podcast to get that done. Uh, We encourage you guys to head over to the website, HeelToughBlog.com. Check out all the stuff that we've got uh, going on over there. A lot of recruiting stuff on the website right now. There is some great stuff up about the commitment of Deuce Caldwell, the three-star linebacker from Malden High School in Malden, South Carolina. He just committed on Friday, so make sure you guys check that out. You can go back, check out the Bo Atkinson commitment article as well if you guys Miss that. Um, all that stuff is on the website. We've got, of course, the stock report heading into the weekend. Uh, that is uh, probably still pretty relevant. Know who was heading in in good standing to uh, the official visit. We are going to do one here probably early in the week, try to get you some information on some of these guys, where they stand as they come out of these official visits and likely head towards what will be some uh, pretty quick decisions here uh, over the next probably week, week and a half. We should start seeing some of these dominoes fall and uh, then throughout the month of July we'll probably also see uh, a bunch of guys committing uh, and making their college decisions in that 2022 class. We'll have you covered on all of that. Of course for us the month of July also means that we are shifting to some of our preseason previews. We are going Going to have those ready for you again this year where we're going to go in depth on every position group. Those will be up on the website here shortly. Uh, the, those are you know articles that I love writing. You guys definitely love reading about those players. So we'll have those up for you uh, starting in early July. We're going to get quarterbacks going probably in that first week of July. So make sure you guys are keeping an eye out for that. Also, uh, we are going to uh, be doing some stuff as we get closer towards the season uh, that we normally do uh, that are really exciting articles such as the breakout players. Uh, those are you know things you always want to keep an eye out for because uh, those are really fun articles. Me and Josh will usually uh, double, double team those, so uh, you'll have both opinions on there. We've done that in years past, and they've been a huge success, so we're going to do those again this year. So make sure you guys are keeping an eye on the website for those. Um, In terms of the podcast, you can check it out over on the website, of course. That's a great place to check it out. Or whatever, you know, site you listen to your podcast on. We're on all of them. Just actually added to Amazon and uh, Audible, where uh, they have plenty of uh, podcasts uh, on. So make sure that you guys are checking that out uh, if you can. Uh, Just subscribe for us. Rate, review uh, if you want to. But definitely hit that subscribe button. We'd greatly appreciate that so that you don't miss any of the episodes of the show. We want you guys to hear all of these great episodes. I'm not really sure if we're going to be able to have any more players on because we're now going to kind of turn our focus to, uh, you know, this upcoming season. We're going to do a lot of previewing. We're going to do, of course, plenty of stuff with the recruiting class that is going to be building over uh, the month of July. And then once we turn to the month of August, then we're really coming down the stretch. And uh, of course, Carolina's first game, September 3rd, on the road against Virginia Tech. So things are starting to pick up here pretty quickly. This next, These next two months are going to go pretty fast. And in August, of course, you're going to have fall camp. So that'll be what will dominate there. So this may have been the last one that we do this year. Of course, we're going to be bringing these back to throughout the next couple of years and going forward after that where we talk to these former Tar Heels. So, um, you know, don't don't worry about that. Uh, if you want, you can, go, of course, go back and check out all the other episodes that we've done this offseason. We've talked to uh, a bunch of former Tar Heels here on the show, and we want to thank all of the guys who stopped by with us during the summer. Um, but yeah, turning the focus to the previews of the upcoming season. Of course, normally we've done those offense, defense, and special teams. No longer are we doing it that way. We've got more access this year. We've got access to our studio once again. So we're going to be able to do a lot more editions of the podcast, and we're going to be able to do them on video, which I'll tell you about 
about here in a minute. But the main thing is, is we're going to have access to the studio to do more additions. So that means that we're going to be giving you a look at all of those positions uh, just like we do on the website. We're going to do that on the podcast as well. We're going to break them down for you, give you a real inside look at this Carolina football team and our opinions of what this team can be this year. And then, of course, we'll go through, we'll do the breakout players on the podcast, and then we will also do where we preview the upcoming season one week before the season is supposed to start, and then early in the week, before that game against Virginia Tech. We will have you covered with everything Virginia Tech. Uh, So make sure that you guys are keeping an eye out for that. Of course, in between there, you'll have the recruiting stuff. Me and Zach Hubbard will be doing that for you guys. And then we'll have the fall camp stories that we'll be talking about once fall camp starts. Me and Josh will be on that when we're doing some of our preseason stuff. And of course, uh, one other element that is still uh, happening, we're working on some things here. Uh, You know, being, you know, out of contact with some of these guys for the last year hasn't been easy, but we're still trying to get on some of these magazine writers. A lot of the magazines, even this year, kind of coming out a little slower than in years past. But, you know, again, everybody's been working through a lot here with COVID-19. Some of these guys, you know, probably just now getting back into their offices. So, uh, you know, Phil Steele's I know, came out this week. A lot of people are excited about that. We're trying to get Phil on the podcast. Uh, Brett Ciencia of Pick 6 Previews has already told us once his preview comes out, which is not until July 9th, he will be glad to come back on the podcast and I'm also talking with Steven Lassen of Athlon Sports. Bill Bender, we'll definitely have him on again. Uh, he's a guy that I can get on pretty much in the snap of a finger, a guy that's been a friend of the podcast for a couple years now. So he'll definitely be in the rotation, and uh, we'll hope to give you guys a little bit of a look from the national perspective, which this year uh, is definitely going to be a little more focused than in past years with Carolina being one of those teams that a lot of people think could be an outside playoff team if someone was to crack the bubble of those uh, those main five that have been in there year in and year out when the uh, playoff has been in place. So uh, make sure that you guys are keeping an eye out for that. And lastly, as I mentioned, video podcasts are coming back, so you do want to go over to the Facebook page. That's also a great area where you can check out uh, the current editions of the podcast. You can also check out all of the articles all in one spot on the Facebook page, Heel Tough Blog on Facebook. Just search that and it will pull up. You guys like and follow the page and you'll get all of the notifications. You'll be able to see it on your timeline. That's exactly what you want to do uh, because we've got some great stuff that's going to be coming up that I just told you about. Um, And like I said, video edition's coming back, so you'll see us on camera. We'll have the graphics and everything that we've used in the past as well. So that'll be really cool for you guys. Uh, I think that was something you guys really enjoyed last year. So Definitely keep an eye out for that. That'll be up here, uh, starting with that quarterback previews where we go through the, that quarterback preview where we go through all of those uh, position groups. We'll start that probably around the same time that we're going to be putting out the articles. Haven't decided if we're going to do the podcast first, then the articles, but we'll see. Uh, and and we'll just kind of take it from there and and expand on it as we go uh, throughout the summer. Uh, of course, all the preview stuff will be on camera. All the stuff, uh, you know, before we start uh, the regular season against um, Virginia Tech on the road, we'll have all that stuff uh, in person. Also, maybe working on some things there that we'll tell you about later on down the line. All that stuff you guys can get with the Heel Tough blog. So make sure you follow the Facebook page on Twitter. Make sure you follow us uh, at uh, Heel Tough blog on Twitter, first of all, for the blog. Then if you want to follow our personal accounts, for me, it's at HTB Anthony. For Josh, it's at HTB Josh. And for Zach, it is at Hack Zubber 2. So that wraps it up for this edition of the podcast. Want to thank Nick Weiler for stopping by with us. Want to thank you guys for listening. And as always, go Tar Heels!